Good morning. Today is March 17th, 2013, Sabbath, according to the creation calendar, not the Gregorian calendar. And the calendar is what we're going to talk about. Uh, this chart that Brother Hodov drew, um, <clears throat> the sacred year and its main feasts, is basically the um, foundational teaching that we have in picture form. Uh, but we also have a quote that explains this calendar uh, taken from Answer Book uh, 3, pages uh, 10 and 11. As Sabbath keepers, uh, we have always thought that uh, we are a peculiar people and that As Sabbath keepers, we have always thought that we are a peculiar people. However, what if the foundation of our belief in the Sabbath is shaken by the straight testimony of the true witness, the rod itself? What would you do to inform the people of this momentous truth contained in this reference? Now, we're going to read what Brother Hodd have taught. And... Um, Hopefully, um, we can make some sense out of this. It's taken from Answer Book 3, pages 10 and 11. To prevent his people from bringing upon themselves such a catastrophe, and to have them intelligent as to the time the year begins, the Lord gave Moses the sacred yearly calendar, which cannot be lost or miscalculated, so long as the earth remains. So when you read this in context, he was telling about how um, the children of Israel, when they came out of uh, Egypt, God had to tell them how to number the days. <clears throat> in other words, they had to uh, know when the calendar started and what calendar they were supposed to use. And because they came up of Egypt, they were basically using the Egyptian calendar. And when you look at that uh, chart, you'll see that um, it's a 365-day year but at the very bottom here, at the end of the year, here's where the year begins at the vernal equinox. It goes around 12 months, 360 days. There's the 360th day right there. And that day, there are five days after that because there's 365 days in this year. They don't count the last five days. They only count 360 so the calendar is only a 360 year cal 60 day calendar and because of that they put the five days that were not important to them and uh, so it wouldn't break the cycle uh, of the 360 day year they put the five days at the end and they didn't count them now that would be good that would be okay uh, if you weren't keeping a weekly cycle of seven days so that you would know the, when the Sabbath was. So this would not be a very good method if you're going to keep the Sabbath. Okay? Because you would be keeping the Sabbath differently every year because there's five days difference. Okay? So you need a more accurate calendar. But this is what he gave to Moses, and he told Moses to begin counting 
in the month of Abib, which is the month of green ears. That's when the barley or the grass at that time of the year, it had green ears. In other words, it had grains on the stalk, but the stalk and the grains were all green. They weren't ripe. So that's an indication as to how early you can keep or begin the new year. So what we're going to try to um, show in this short study is whether the Gregorian calendar and this chart and the um, elements that Brother Hodov tells us have to be present in order for you to accurately begin the year and to have an accurate calendar. Okay? So let's go back to the, um, the passage here. Now, so it says, it's a catastrophe, okay, to prevent his people from bringing upon themselves such a catastrophe, not knowing when the year begins. Because it's very important uh, to the uh, um, Israelites to have a calendar that's accurate because the days that they observe, the holy days that they observe, have to be right on the true day, especially the Sabbath and the Sabbaths of the year. Because if they're off one day, then they're not on the right day. You right? So you have to be in synchronization and on time with God, okay, and His sacred year. So it's a catastrophe, he says, and to have them intelligent as to the time the year begins, the Lord gave to Moses the sacred yearly calendar, what we just looked at which cannot be lost or miscalculated so long as the earth remains. So, it all has to do with the earth. Okay? And, uh, as we read further, you're going to find that it is the natural movements of the earth that determine how you um, determine the calendar and the year and the days, and the months, and the weeks. All of that has to do with the natural movements of the earth. Why? Because you have to be able to observe it on the earth. It can't be something way out in space that you can't see, because you don't have a telescope, and you're not an astronomer, so you don't even look, know what you're looking for. It has to be something that you can be observing on the earth. Even a child or a shepherd out in the field can observe it. Do you understand that? So that they can tell the time accurately. He told him that the day which preceded the Exodus was the 14th day of the first month and that forever thereafter they were to commemorate the Passover on that very night each year, the night following the 14th day. So you have the whole 14th day, the night part of the day, and then the light part of the day, that 20, uh, that complete day, evening and morning. And he says that the Passover is the day after. Right? And that would be the 15th day of the first month. And he said forever thereafter, you're supposed to keep it on the 15th day, on the 14th day at even, the beginning of the 15th day. And he says that's a special day. So if that's a special day and you have to have it accurate, I'm going to show you how to keep it. I'm going to show you how to be in synchronization with my time. Not the world's time, not the Pope's time, not Mohammed's time, you know, not the dragon's time, the Chinese. My time, the Creator. So it's very important. Because don't you think that if you're keeping the calendar and the days that the Creator established, you would be worshipping the Creator? 
with his system of time and his system of holy days instead of anyone else that created a calendar? Huh? That's what he wants. He wants us to worship him, the creator. Okay? So he's going to make sure that we know how to tell the time, his time. Or this is all for nothing. You see, you understand? This is just talk. This, th 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 there's no uh, end to this if he's not going to show us the true time. Thus was the Lord reestablishing the creation calendar. So right here it says, the Lord is establishing the creation calendar. Okay? What happened at the beginning? Do you think he can do that? I think he can because he's the only one that knows what he did. He has to tell us and we can't figure it out for ourselves. So let's let him tell us. Put away all your preconceived ideas, all your habits of keeping the Gregorian calendar because that's the, pretty much the only calendar you know. And just put that all aside and don't even think about it. And let the Holy Spirit tell you exactly how the Lord established the calendar and how he wants it to be kept. Is that fair? Isn't that fair? But don't try to project your preconceived idea into this because you're not, you can't. It's not fair. Let him tell you the whole thing and then think about it and pray about it and let the Spirit convict you or not convict you. That's up to you. The Lord was reestablishing the creation calendar and reaffirming that the year begins on the day of the vernal equinox on which spring, the first season of the year, commences and on which the sun and the moon were created, the fourth day from the beginning of creation. The only point in time at which in the very nature of things, the year could begin. So here we have, he's taking us all the way back to the week of creation, and he's telling us that the vernal equinox, or the first day of spring, that means, vernal means spring, okay? Equinox means equal day and equal night. Equal day and equal night. So, equal day and equal night means equal day, equal light, and equal darkness. Okay? If you took a flashlight and you shined it on a ball and you shined it right on the center of it, it would divide that ball into half light and half darkness. Why? Because the light is going to go past the ball, right? It's going to shine right past the ball. So that edge, all the way around, it's called the, um, it's called the um, path of luminosity. It's the edge where light and dark come together at even. So when God says at even is the beginning and the end of the day, that's what that means, at even. It's dividing the globe in half. And it's always being divided in half, by the way. Because the sun's shining on a round object, and a round object allows the light to go past it. And at the very edge, the top edge and the bottom edge, the edge, the circumference, okay, all the way around, is the path of luminosity. That's where the light and the darkness come together. That is the end and the beginning of a day. Because he said the evening and the morning were the first day. Now he said evening and morning. He didn't say sunset and sunrise. He said evening. That's when it's at even. And it begins, the earth begins to turn and it, and it goes through the darkness. If you took the point 
where the darkness and the light come together and you marked it. Let's say it's Waco, Texas. Okay? And you marked it. Waco, Texas would have to go, spin, through all the darkness and then it would come to the morning where the morning and the eve and the um, night and the day come together again. But this is the beginning of the light part. And then it goes all through the light part, all the way back, and Waco goes to the even again, or where the light and the darkness come together again. And then you go through the darkness, all the way to the light, and then you go through the light, and then come back to the darkness. Now that's observable on the earth, isn't it? All you have to do is look and see if it's light out or dark out. And if you want to be really uh, specific, uh, you wait until it's even. After twilight, twilight, there's no more light. Okay? And then it's, it's dark, and then it goes to twilight, dawn, again, same thing, same condition. And then you go through the light, and then you go to twilight, even, morning, even. Now, all God said was evening and morning are the first day because it still has to travel through the light part and go back to the evening again. So he was, he was, he was, he was very um, conservative in his wording. He said evening and morning, and it, when you say evening and morning, it's talking about movement, right? There has to be movement in order for you to get back uh, to the beginning again. So, it says, in the very nature of things here, the very nature of things. I'm going to read this again. And I'm probably going to repeat things because people think they mean something and they don't think of other things they could possibly mean, okay? And now that the Lord's trying to tell us how to keep it accurately, then we need to know what every word means and what it suggests, okay? So that we don't get misinterpreting it, okay? So, thus was the Lord reestablishing. So he already established it. Now he's reestablishing it. He's doing it again. Why? Because it was lost sight of. It was lost sight of. In other words, we're not keeping accurate time with God. We're keeping accurate time uh, with the Roman Catholic Church. Because this Gregorian calendar was not created until 1582 A.D. Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. And what we're talking about, he created it the first day, the first week. Do you understand? Of creation. That's what we're talking about. That's why he calls it. The Lord was reestablishing the creation calendar. Not the Gregorian. Or the Muslim. Or the Chinese. Do you understand that? And reaffirming that the year begins on the day of the vernal equinox. So he was reaffirming that the day that he called the vernal equinox, which was the day that he created the sun, the moon, and the stars, that was the vernal equinox. It wasn't what the Roman Catholic Church, uh, through their Jesuit astronomer Clavius, redefined the vernal equinox. Do you know that the uh, uh, Gregorian calendar was purposely created so that they could fix the equinoxes? In other words, put them on a certain day every year. Why? So that they know when to keep Easter. That's why. Why? Because in the Julian calendar, it was fluctuating. See, in the natural, the natural course of, of the way the, 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 the sun or the earth travels around the sun and it turns. It's based on an evening and a morning. That's the, that's the smallest unit of time that God created. One day. That's, that's what God did. And then he numbered the days. There was the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, and the seventh day. 
He just numbered the days. He didn't call them by, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Those are pagan uh, gods. Those are the names of pagan and mythical gods. He just numbered them. And then he numbered the weeks. He numbered the weeks into years. He numbered the days into months and into seasons and into years. He just numbered them. That's how it was in the beginning. So he's trying to reestablish that and reaffirm that the first day of the year is when there is equal day and equal night. When you shine a light on a globe, it divides it automatically in half. So the light that shone on the earth in the beginning, the first day, was not the sun or the moon. It was the light of the Holy Spirit. It was the light that came from God's throne. Because it said, and God said, and Elohim said, plural, masculine plural, let us create. Okay? And so the creators, the Holy Spirit being the glory, the light, the uh, one that, that actually is the creative power, the creator's son spoke, he spoke it. And she created it. Do you believe that? It says that the uh, Spirit of God fluttered over the waters when the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. It says the Spirit of God fluttered over the waters like a dove, you know? And then when he said, let there be light, she made the light happen. Because she is the light. So she shone on the earth. And the earth was divided. The light and the darkness. The light he called day, the darkness he called night. The evening and the morning were the first day. On the second day, he separated the waters from the waters and put an expanse between those waters. So there was a canopy, like an orange peel, around the earth. And it was water. How did he keep it up there? I don't know. He suspended it. You know, there's no gravity out there. So it'll just hang out out there. You see what I'm saying? It was far enough away from the earth that the, the law of gravity wasn't... That's how satellites stay up there. Okay? They get far enough away from the earth that the law of gravity does not work out there. So he put that water out there. Why? Because the water was uh, covering the earth and there was no land. And he wanted to start creating the, you know, creating the earth. So he had to move the water away from it. Okay, so he puts it way out there. Okay, and it stays suspended there. And then it says he created the um, he created the um, let me get my Bible here. Thank you. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto the place unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so and god called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he the seas and god saw that it was good and god said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. 
And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the four, third day. Now, he created vegetation. Okay? I want to point that out because in the next day, he creates the sun. And vegetation needs sun to uh, the rays of the sun for it to uh, live, right? Now, why do you think he did that? Because he wanted to show that all life on the earth is sustained by his light, not the sun. He can darken the sun. He can uh, stop the sun from uh, uh, shining. Um, uh, he can do a lot of things. But he can still keep everything, all life on the earth, uh, living and protected. Do you understand that? So, and God said there, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So instead of God's light dividing the earth in half, right, shining on the earth, he said, let the lights do this. Lights. The day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So they're going to help us see signs in the heavens. They're going to help us see uh, the days and the seasons and the years. Okay? And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. Listen to what it says here. Two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So let me give you a picture of what he created. On one side of the earth he created the sun. Because remember, the sun has to shine on one side of the earth to give you day, right? And it shines right on the center of it, right? To divide the day. Because that's what he said. He made those lights to divide the day. Okay? Now, he created another light on the other side of the earth. It's called the moon. Now, in the beginning, and I'm going to challenge you, okay? You go and look up what it says lights. It says he made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. The greater light to rule the day was the sun. The lesser light to rule the night was the moon. Now I'm going to tell you something about the moon and how it was created. It was created just the same as the sun, but it was smaller and it didn't give as much light. It was a lesser light. And when you look up light you're going to find out that it's a luminary. And in the luminary means it gives off light. It doesn't reflect light. It gives off its own light because it's a ball of fire. <clears throat> so the sun and the moon <clears throat> were created the same, but one was smaller and it didn't give off as much light. One ruled the day. It was on the day side of the earth. And the other ruled the night. It was on the night side of the earth. In order for the moon to always stay on the night side of the earth as it's turning, it could not be orbiting the earth. Because the moon, if it's orbiting the earth, it's not ruling the night. It's ruling the day and the night. So, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something, and you're going to have to either pray about it or believe it or whatever. But the moon orbited the sun in the beginning with the earth. It's called synchronous orbit. So as the earth was going around, it was like a twin. Uh, it's twin, but it was going around the sun too. And it followed it. It was in synchronous orbit. That's the only way that it could be shining on the dark side or the night side all the time and ruling it. Do you understand this?
Anybody not understand it? Okay. So it ruled the day. The sun ruled the day and the moon ruled the night. And it was in synchronous orbit with the earth around the sun. Around the sun. Now if you understand that and you hold on to that thought, okay, and you stop trying to uh, believe what you were taught, okay, in school by science, and you just take the Bible as it reads, and it's trying to tell you something, the Lord's trying to tell you something, okay, then you won't be confused. You won't be confused. Honestly, I've been studying this for almost 40 years now, and I'm, it, when you understand it this way, there's no confusion. If you want to say that the moon reflects the light of the sun, as it do, did after the flood, but it wasn't until after the flood that it lost its its um, light. It got burned out. It burned out. Because the moon helped bring down that water that was up there. When God was going to flood the earth once again, that canopy of water that was up there had to be steamed off to form clouds and for it to fall down on the earth again. To flood the earth in Noah's time. So the moon got caught in the orbit of the earth. It fell from the heavens. God pushed it so that it would hit that firmament and steam off all that or get close enough to where it would steam it. It didn't have to hit it. It just steamed it off, burned it off, turned it into clouds, and it rained on the earth. They never had clouds before the flood. Never saw clouds. And if that canopy was around the earth, it was protecting the earth from the rays of the sun and the moon. Two luminaries beating on the earth. That was pretty hot, don't you think? It could have been pretty hot. Uh, at least uh, seven times hotter than it is now. Because the moon is seven times uh, less hot than the sun was. Okay? So, when you put all this together and you look at it, no wonder God had to put a canopy up there. He had two fireballs that were affecting the earth. And he had to protect the earth. And that light shone through the water, the canopy of water, and it was refracted. It was split up. So it wasn't, concent it wasn't a concentrated beam so that it burned through. You understand? It was refracted and it was dispersed. And you had even temperature all over the earth. It was a tropical climate. Tropical climate, like what's in a terrarium. In a terrarium, you just seal it and you let it water itself, the mist. Okay, there was no rain. You hardly have to water the terrarium if you keep it closed and closed. Because the water evaporates and it goes back down. It condenses and goes back down. It evaporates, goes back down. Okay? And that's similar to what we had here on the earth. It was like a greenhouse. Okay? So, you have the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. Now, if you look out there now, you'll see a belt that goes around the celestial sphere, and it's the constellations, or the Maseroth, or the astrological signs, okay? They're the constellations. Now, in the beginning, the gospel was written in the stars. Every one of those constellations and the whole panoramic view that goes all the way around the earth was the gospel in the stars. And all the stars and the houses told a different part of the plan of salvation and who Christ was and who the Holy Spirit was and what he was coming to do. And we'll study that some other time. But I just want you to know that when they say... The month was in Aries, okay, in the house of Aries or the house of the ram. That means when you were looking off the earth into the celestial sphere at night and you had the moon out there, use the moon as your pointer, 
And if you look from the Earth, it would be in the constellation of Aries at the beginning of the month or the beginning of the constellation of Aries. And there's 12, ma 12 major constellations, which means there are 12 houses and a circle is 360 degrees. And a month is 30 degrees. A day, I'll give you a guess. How much would a day be? Oh, I think it might be one degree. Well, maybe so. So, the Earth moves one degree, and the moon is in synchronizing, synchronized orbit with it around the sun, so it moves one degree. Day two, one degree. Day three, one degree. Day four, day five, day six, day seven. And it goes all the way to 30 degrees, and that arc that it made is a month. That's how the month tells the time, or the moon tells the time. It's really the Earth telling the time. Because it's orbiting the sun, and it's marking off a day. A day, a second day, a third day, a fourth day, right? Evening and morning, evening and morning. So it counts the day, but if you're looking off the Earth into the sky at night, you can see the constellations, so you can see what month you're in, what house you're in. So you go all the way around this this um, celestial sphere, the equator of the celestial sphere. That's what he made the stars for. Signs, signs, signs of the plan of salvation. Okay. Seasons. You know that before the flood there were no seasons. It was a tropical climate. There was no rain. There was no winter. There was nothing. It was a temperate climate. It wasn't until after the flood. So God was thinking ahead. He was thinking ahead because he knew that he was going to have to uh, do something to this uh, perfect calendar that he made. Okay, For 2,000 years almost, there was a perfect calendar. And Enoch, Enoch, the one that was translated without seeing death, was Noah's great-great-grandfather. So he knew, he understood, he saw all this. Noah saw it too, but he saw when it was taken away. So Enoch, I believe, taught Noah how to understand how to tell time after the flood. Do you want to know how to do that? Because the Lord's telling us how to do it. That's what he's trying to reestablish and reaffirm. Isn't that what it's saying? And it has to do with the natural movements of the earth. So just listen to what I'm saying before you judge it. Because you're going to tell me something I've already ta thought about and I've already got an answer for. Because don't think I haven't tried to figure out where this might be wrong. But I want to know what's right, you see. So he reestablished and reaffirmed the creation calendar. Now let me finish what he did on the fourth day. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also constellations. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night. Rule over the day and rule over the night. So the lesser light has to rule over the night. You know how the day, the greater light rules over the day. When it goes down, there's no light. It rules. So the moon ruled too. Do you understand? The same. There's no difference in wording. And to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay? Now that's the fourth day. That's what he created on the fourth day. Now Victor Hodef is going to refer to that. That day of creation. And he's going to tell you something about it. 
Thus was the Lord reestablishing the creation calendar, reaffirming that the year begins on the day of the vernal equinox on which spring, the first season of the year, commences and on which the sun and the moon were created the fourth day from the beginning of creation, the only point in time at which in the very nature of things the year could begin. Now why would he say that? Because that's when God began it. It's in nature. God began the year then. The day he created the sun and the moon and the stars. The fourth day from the beginning of creation. Okay? And he called it the vernal equinox. The spring day on which there is equal night and equal day. Okay? Including the twilight. The dawn and the dusk. Including that. Not sunrise and sunset. And so it is that Passover, the atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles, the three most important feasts in the year, besides other feasts, were controlled by the solar year and by the lunar month. Now, a solar year... It takes the earth 360 days to go around the sun. That's 360 revolutions, evening and morning, evening and morning. And you count them as it goes all the way around the sun. That's how it was before the flood, when there was a canopy of water protecting it from the sun. After the canopy was down, the sun was too hot, it would have burned the earth. So God pushed the earth further away from the sun, so it took it 364 days instead of 360 days to orbit the sun. Because there was no canopy. Now, what did he do to the water? Well, he froze the water North Pole, South Pole, tilted the earth on its axis 23.4 degrees so that that uh, North Pole and South Pole are pointing away from the sun. Away from the sun. And as the earth goes around the sun, in the winter time it's pointing away. In the summer time, it's pointing away away as well because the sun isn't in it's up north so it still points away so you got this movement of the earth like this here pointing towards it and a bat away from did I say pointing towards it's point it's pointing towards the sun in the summer in the winter it's pointing away from the sun that's why it's cooler but the sun is not in the the main sun is not in the northern hemisphere um, in the winter time it's in the southern hemisphere and then when the earth tilts the other way uh, the sun is in the northern hemisphere not in the southern hemisphere so we have the same thing happening this wobble okay on the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere but at the time of the equinoxes, guess what? It's right up, 90 degrees. When it gets to the solstice, it's 23.4 degrees. It comes back again, 90 degrees. And then it goes back to the solstice, 23.4 degrees. So there's a natural wobble. And God put it in there because that's the clock. It's like a grandfather clock with a pendulum going tick, talk tick talk that's how you get the seasons after the flood okay but that's our clock that's our calendar that's what he did that's he gave it to us cuz if you look on the horizon okay on the day of the vernal equinox when it's equal day and equal night 
including dawn and dusk, the twilights. The sun comes up due east, perfectly due east. And then it sets due west. So if you had a stick in the ground on that day, see, you could leave that stick there all year round. But on that day of the vernal equinox, and you can mark it, because you know where, where you, can, you can find the east star, okay? You know where the north star is, Polaris. You can find the east star, because this has nothing to do with magnetic north or east or west, okay? You can't go by magnetic. It's not true east, not true west, and not true north. You have to go by the constellations. That's what the Lord did. He went by the constellations when he created them. Okay? First week of creation. So, boom! You have, uh, on the day of the equinox, equal day, equal night, the sun comes up. It's due east and west. There's a stick in the ground. The shadow points eastward. Or west. Comes up in the east. Makes the shadow point westward. And then it, at noon... It's directly above that thing. There's no shadow at all. It's directly over it. So you know if it's over this way or over that way, it's not the right time. It's directly over the stick, and then it goes down. At sundown, that stick is causing the shadow to go east. So if you had three sticks in the ground, okay? One in the middle, one at east, and one at west, you've got your calendar. Okay? Because what happens after that, after the spring equinox, the sun comes up and it keeps moving northward. Okay? Until the solstice, the tilt, 23.4 degrees. So how far is it going to go? 23.4 degrees on the horizon. And you put another stick there. Because that's your equinox, or your um, solstice, summer solstice. And it's going to count 90 days exactly. It'll hit that. And then it'll come back. On that day where it stays there, you don't count that day. Because it's there. God added four more days to the calendar. The four days uh, before he created the sun, moon, and stars, he added those to be the first day of the season. And he added them so that the cycle of the week isn't changed. The seven-day cycle of the week is not changed, but the 30-day cycle of the moon is also kept accurate. So you don't count that day. Remember I showed you in that other calendar, there were five days in the Egyptian calendar. You, they put them all at the end of the year. Well, God had four days at the beginning of the year because he said on the uh, fifth day, okay, uh, that's when you start counting the calendar after the sun and the moon and the stars were created. It's like he made this solar clock, he wound it up, and then he got it, he got it ticking. He let the pendulum go. And it went tick, tock, it just kept going, see? Back and forth like that. So, you start at the vernal equinox, because that's what he says he did, right? On the fourth day of creation week, he takes that pendulum and he lets it go. And it goes all the way to the summer solstice, 23.4 degrees, which is 90 days. And then it counts 90 more days back. And it comes back to the autumnal equinox, that east-west axis right in the center. And then it goes all the way 90 days, 90 degrees to 23.4 degrees. Okay, 23.4 degrees, but 90 days. Because the earth tilts that way for the winter solstice. So, there you have the fall and the winter, and then it starts coming back to the spring, and then it goes to the summer, and then back to the uh, fall, then it goes to the winter, back to the spring, summer, fall, 
winter, spring, summer, fall, when, and it's counting 90 days each time and marking off when it hits when it hits that end post that day you don't count in the calendar it takes 30 days to get there okay you're there that's the season beginning of the season 30 days to come back you don't count that day 30 days to get to the other season you don't count that 30 day excuse me 90 not 30 days it's 30, 30, 30. Uh, it goes back. But it's accurate. That never changes. I've, I've, I've been doing it now for two, three years now. It doesn't change. Now I'm going to show you that this is what Victor Hodoff was talking about. He's not talking about what we think is the vernal equinox that's been redefined by the Gregorian calendar. That was created in 1582. This is what was created at creation week. Do you understand that? And even after the flood, it can still remain accurate. Because the Lord told Enoch how to tell Noah, who I believe probably uh, you know, wrote, had, there were writings that, 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 that even Moses could know. But Moses' calendar, the one I just showed you, is not the accurate one. It was the one he gave them in the interim. So, let's read on here. And so it is that the Passover, the Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles, the three most important feasts of the year, besides other feasts are controlled by the solar year and by the lunar month. Now solar year means 360 revolutions of the earth and lunar month means the 30 days. Okay? 30 revolutions of the earth. It has nothing to do with the moon going around the earth. I used to keep it that way. It's not accurate. It's not accurate. There's 10 days that you have to account for if you keep a lunar calendar. It's not in synchronization with the solar. You see, it has to be in synchronization with the earth going around the sun. Don't you see that? Nothing else. That's what was going on for the first four days. The earth was going around nothing. And then on the fourth day, it was still counting days, right? But it did not start counting days of the month until the fifth day of the week. After he created the solar clock, the solar system. Because it's a clock, it's got gears in it and everything. So, the weekly Sabbath by the day on which creation began. See, there's people out there that want to say that the only way that you can know when the Sabbath really is is to look at the, to the moon. Well, the moon was created on the fourth day. The Sabbath is seven days after creation began. It doesn't work. I've tried it. It doesn't work. Don't look at the moon. You know, Enoch taught Noah to not look at the moon because it would make it inaccurate. He even said, don't look at the sun. Because it's the revolution of the earth. One revolution of the earth is one day. Evening and morning is one day. And that's it. You number the days into weeks and then months and then years. And then weeks of years, in other words, seven-year uh, um, periods, okay, so that you can have a sabbatical year. And then you, you number uh, a, a week of um, a year, you have seven year times seven cycles, and that's a, a jubilee, 50 years, okay? And that's the way the Lord numbers them, okay? It does the numbering. 
Okay, besides other feasts are controlled by the solar year and by the lunar month, the weekly Sabbath by the day on which creation began. And now listen to this. And the year itself by the vernal equinox, the immovable signpost. It's not movable. Man can't move that. Now I'm going to show you if he's a true prophet, and I believe he is, I'm going to show you that I can prove him wrong if you use the Gregorian calendar. So I'm going to So, I have a <clears throat> calendar converter here, which is basically, you take a day of the year, and you put, um, like, I'm, what I'm going to do is take March the 20th, which is what the Gregorian calendar says is the vernal equinox, right? The same every year, right? The vernal equinox. Now, what Brother Hod have said is that the vernal equinox is always on the fourth day of the week, of creation week, right? Always. Always. It doesn't change. I'm going to show, especially Davidians, because Davidians believe that Victor Hodaf is a true prophet. I'm going to prove him wrong by using the calendar that they use. Okay? I'm going to use the calendar that they use, which is the Gregorian calendar, and I'm going to prove Victor Hodaf wrong. Okay? So, it says on the chart, March 20 is the vernal equinox, right? Okay, March 2021, 20, because... Uh, the Gregorian day starts at midnight, not at sundown, like God says. Okay? So it starts at midnight. So that's why you have to say 2021. You have to cover both days, because it's at midnight. So I'm going to say 20, because it doesn't matter. So what you do with this uh, chart here, you see, I'm going to put 20 in there. And it's March the 20th, okay? The weekday is Wednesday. Hey, the fourth day of the week, the Gregorian week. It works. This year it does, okay? Now, Victor Hoda said that the vernal equinox has to be on a Wednesday or the fourth day of the week, right? So to this year it's accurate, the vernal equinox of the Gregorian calendar with the Gregorian week and the Gregorian definition of vernal equinox, okay? Now let's see how it does it on other years, okay? So I'm just going to change the year, okay? Let's go... What in the world? Oh, it's the Julian calendar. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong spot. That's good because that shows you that the Julian calendar doesn't do it either. So I'm going to go not to the 14th. i got to get the 20th here. I have to stay above the line. We'll start over again. Here's the third, 2013. It's a Wednesday. The fourth day of the Gregorian week, okay? Now I'm going to change the year only. I'm going to put 2012. It's a Tuesday. So the vernal equinox is on a Tuesday last year. If you count four days after that, because this is what he says, this is what I'm trying to prove, is that the f three days after the fourth day of creation week was the Sabbath, right? 
right? Fifth, sixth, and seventh. And the Lord said, the seventh day of his creation week is the Sabbath. Okay? So, last year, the vernal equinox came on Tuesday. So, three days after Tuesday is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's not on Saturday, is it? Is it? No. Okay, let's go back another year. Sunday. It's on a Sunday. The equinox is on a Sunday, which means that's the fourth day of the week, creation week. So you count four days after that. Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's when we said we were keeping uh, a, um, a Wednesday Sabbath because we took what Brother Hod have said, okay, verbally, and we went along with it, with the, with the Gregorian calendar. And when we did it, we found out, oh, it's Sunday. That means three days after is Wednesday. That's when the Sabbath is. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you look at all the years, and this is what everyone comes up to me and says, it's going to be different every year. Yes, it is if you keep it according to the Gregorian calendar. See, now it's Saturday. So that would make Sabbath on Tuesday that year. You see that? Do you see that? Okay. It's something that's obvious, okay? This can't, you can't not see this. Okay, I'm going to put uh, the 9th, 209. It's a Friday. So this would make it Monday. Two thousand eight. Now it's a Thursday again. Now it's a Tuesday. Do it again. Now it's a Monday. Now it's a Sunday. You see how it goes? It's it's floating. It goes back and forth. But when does it hit Wednesday again? Well, see, when does it hit Wednesday again? That's what I that's what I want to know. How many times out of a decade do we get the Sabbath right? According to that. Do you follow what I'm trying to prove here? If you go by the by the Gregorian calendar and you read what Brother Hodov says and you believe that he is accurate in what he says and then you use the Gregorian calendar, it doesn't work. So does that mean he's wrong? Or is the, Gregor or is the Gregorian calendar not to be used because it doesn't work the way God's creation calendar works. And he said that this is how he reestablishes it. Don't you think that there's a discrepancy here? Do you think it's the Gregorian calendar or it's Brother Hodov? Who do you think is, is right or wrong? Huh? It's the Gregorian calendar. I'm just proving it to you. I'm showing you. March the 20, even if it's 2021, it's more than one day off. You understand? It's more than one day off, and it's not accurate. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna continue this, okay? Saturday, Thursday, whoops. You have to go all the way back to 2002. 2013 and 2002 for it to hit land on Wednesday. See, it landed on a Wednesday. So now,
Okay, continuing on, I have another uh, type of a calculator here. And it's going to give me the date, like years, or what years does the date land on, like the same day of the week. So I'm going to look here at 2013, 2013. And the day that I'm looking for is March 20, so I'll put March 20 in here, and it landed March 20 this year, lands on a Wednesday, so I'll put Wednesday in there. Now I'm going to go and see all the years, okay? These are all the years that March 20 lands on a Wednesday. So back in 1803, 1811, 1867, 1889, 95, and you can see all these dates. Now, 1929, it landed on a Wednesday. Okay. 1935, it landed on a Wednesday. 1946 and 1957. It did not land on a Wednesday. See? on other years and it goes up you know it's going up now these are the leap years it landed on a Wednesday whoops now if you look at 1844 that was a leap year and it landed on a Wednesday Uh, what I'd like to do is find out when they um, started keeping the Sabbath in the Advent movement, and of course they were using they were keeping it according to the Gregorian calendar. Um, 1844, October 22, 1844. Uh, that year it landed on a Wednesday, so it was similar to um, creation week. Do you understand what I'm saying? The days of that year were similar to the calendar that you would use if it was uh, if uh, the vernal equinox landed on the on a Wednesday of the Gregorian calendar. And these are the years. 1844 it did, 1929 it did. Um, uh, 1918, and it might be that these dates or dates very close. 1833, when William Miller. 1844, you see. Um, 1985, 91. These are years that things happened within the Advent movement that were important. Not on all of them, but most of them. 1844 and 1833, for sure. Okay? 1929, for sure. Um, so, this year, 2013, 
yes, this is the 430 year anniversary. We're within the 430 year anniversary of the Gregorian calendar being set up, established. So I believe this is the year that the Lord is delivering us from the bondage of that calendar. So he's teaching us how to get out of it. Okay? To get out of it. Because we're being liberated. And that's why we have all this we have this understanding about it now. It's coming out. Now, this shows the leap years that it landed on a Wednesday, and these are the regular years that it landed on a Wednesday. Okay? And uh um you know, I think there's something to this. But anyway, uh, this website is called calendarhome.com. Calendarhome.com. Now, in 19 uh, or 2012, uh, I've made this up, okay, to show people that in the Gregorian calendar, um, the vernal equinox is supposed to begin on the fourth day, according to what Brother Hodder said. It's supposed to be on the fourth day of the Gregorian week, if what he's saying is true, because if, if the if the Gregorian calendar is accurate then the vernal equinox in the Gregorian calendar should be on a Wednesday. Correct? So, <clears throat> in the creation calendar, the vernal equinox is always on the fourth day when the sun, moon, and stars were created. It's always on that. Okay? And it never changes. My experience in... Once you learn that cycle that I told you about the 30, 30, 30, and the one day is uh, not counted, but it stays as part of the weekly cycle, uh, you know when your Sabbath, weekly Sabbath is. You also know when your yearly Sabbaths are. And they're the same every season, every, excuse me, every year in every season. It doesn't change. It's the same day of the same month and the same week. Okay? And to me, the Lord had to, um, you know, he's, he's very accurate in everything he does. But this is the only way that you can make what Brother Hod have said work. You have to throw out the Gregorian calendar and ask God, what is your calendar? Okay? How does your calendar work? And I'm going to try to uh, explain it here. Show you the differences, okay? The day begins at 12 a.m. and ends at 12 a.m. In, uh, in the Gregorian calendar. The day begins not at sundown, but at twilight. Okay? Begins and ends at twilight after the at at the circumference of the earth where evening and morning or light and day meet it's called even even okay and um that's how it is in 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 the lord's calendar the year begins on january the 1st in the gregorian calendar and the d one day, evening and morning, one month of 30 days, and one year of 360 days. That's how God's year is. And it begins on the day of equal day and equal night, which is the vernal equinox according to the movement of the earth. When the sun comes up, it casts a shadow. Uh, if there's a stick in the ground perpendicular to the earth, the sun casts a shadow east to west. 
and when it sets west to east and when it's above right at 12 o'clock or right at excuse me I made a mistake there's no 12 o'clock right at midday it's right straight above on that day okay so you could set up a, a calendar by putting sticks in the ground uh, and we know what the degree is we know what the uh, angles sh should be we know how many days you know and I may start making these because you have a 20 um, you have an axis in the middle you have 23.4 degrees on either side so that's 46.8 degrees 46.8 degrees okay that's what that arc would be and uh, in the middle of that would be your axis and then you would have a set of uh, um, holes for pegs and you count 30 30 30 and then the one day is the beginning of the season and then you go 30 30 30 going back again and you can have two sets of holes or you can have one set of holes but those months are going to be you know different and you number the months you don't name them you number everything God never named anything he numbered everything okay so you go 30 30 30 and then you're at the um, um, uh, first uh, season which is um, summer then you go 30 30 30 you're back to fall then you go 30 30 30 and you're uh, winter then you go 30 30 30 back again to uh, the spring that's your clock that's it there's your calendar and um, you could set it up so that you know exactly where east and west is and you, you could put it on that um, um, axis but you don't have to honestly you don't have to because once you know the first day and you know when to start counting and I believe the Lord has been gracious in showing us the accurate day to start counting and he did it last year and he told us that in the Gregorian calendar it was February the 16th not March the 20 and I've read uh, since then that the um, equal day and equal night even from uh, people trying to explain what the vernal equinox is they say that equal day and equal night is not on the vernal equinox it's sometime earlier in the year see it's sometime earlier in the year when it really happens it's a month almost a month before so I believe the Lord has shown us accurately how to count because he told us the first day if you don't know what the first day is that's what he did with Moses when he came out of Egypt he said this is the month the first month for you that means the first day of the first month okay came right after the vernal equinox now that may have been so with with Moses but that's not so in the Gregorian calendar because you know he came out of Egypt you know uh, after the flood and he came out uh, you know when they were in captivity for 430 years okay and we're be, we've been in captivity to um, Babylon Roman Catholicism for 430 years so we're coming out of that right now this is the year we're coming out of it so the Lord had to tell me this is the year this is the day start counting from this day don't listen to anybody else that's trying to tell you to count some other day you count on this day and I found that he was accurate I'm not going to change it until he tells me to change it I had somebody come and tell me oh I I think it's wrong there's one minute off you're going by the 24-hour day you see 60-minute uh, hour time system God goes by night and day one revolution of the earth 
from night to day and back to night again. And the day is divided into 12 equal parts by the sun. If you had a sundial there, if you had that stick in the ground still, it would divide that day into 12 equal parts. Every day. It doesn't matter what it is on the watch. It's what it is according in relative to the sun and the revolution of the earth. And they say, well, the, the earth, uh, you know, when it's wobbling, going back and forth like that, it speeds up and slows down, speeds up. It doesn't matter. See, you're creating uh, um, things that have nothing to do with his way of telling time. It doesn't matter because we're not using a, a watch, a 60-minute hour clock. They don't synchronize, and they're not meant to synchronize with that. You see? That's why it's off, and they think the scientists have to fix it. You know why? Because they're going by that other system of time, not God's. They're trying to disprove God by creating their own system of time. And it says in, in Daniel 7, 25, the man of sin, the little horn power, thinks he thought he could change times and laws. Why does he do it? To wear out the saints. He wants to wear me out because I want to be a, go along with the Lord's program and the Lord's time. So he's trying to wear me out to inaccurately think that I'm doing it accurately, you see, but I'm doing it in, inaccurately because I'm going by his system. And he's laughing at me when, I, when, I, when, when I'm trying to do it with his system and trying to mesh the two, God's system and his system. And he's laughing at me. And the Lord says, do you want me to stop him from laughing at you? I said, yes. He says, here, I'll tell you the truth. You don't even use his system. Because as soon as you start using his system, he laughs at you. Because you're trying to do what I ask you to do in his system. And you can't do that. You have to come into my system, come into my kingdom, come into my, you know, side of the line. Choose ye this day whom ye are going to serve. Come on my side of the fence or the line. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. You can serve the Pope over there. Okay? And that's what I've had to do. Because as you see in the rest of these, a month, months are not equal in his time. Spring begins on March 2021. The year is 365 and a quarter days. The lunar year is 10 days shorter than the solar. Traditional Sabbath day for Sabbath keepers is Saturday. When you find out that, you know, the vernal equinox is not always on the fourth day of the Gregorian week, which is Wednesday. And I showed you that with that calculator. It's not the same day. It's not the same every year. And the Sabbath has to be the seventh day every seven days. Do you understand that? But the way you can verify it is to know when the equinox is, and it's three days after it. Am I right? I feel you. Three days after the equinox, three days after the day that he created the sun, moon, and stars, is the Sabbath. Brother Hodif says it's an immovable signpost. See? It's an immovable signpost. The year is 364 days, but only 360 are counted. The four other days, you know, the four days before it was counted uh, in the week of creation, uh, he didn't start counting on, until the fifth day, the month, the days of the month. So those four days, God used them after the flood to be the first day of the season. But, you see, if you started counting on the fifth day of creation, you counted 364 days to get back to the beginning again. So God took that 364-day pattern and used it after the flood. He told us not to count every, you know, that 90th first day. 30, 30, 30, you don't count the 90th first day uh, as part of the month, you part, you, but you still count it as part of the week because he did. 
That way your weekly cycle never changes. If you go by a lunar uh, um, calendar and a lunar-based Sabbath, uh, it's going to be off. Because you have 28 days plus 2 days. So every, every month it's going to be 2 days off from what it was the month before. You understand that? You can't use that. And then you have, if you go by the solar, you're going to have to have 365 and a quarter days, so it's off. That's what the that's what the Gregorian calendar is. It's a solar calendar. But if you go by what the Lord did, okay, if you go by the what the Lord says, it begins on the fourth day, the day that He created the sun and the moon and the stars. That's the immovable signpost. Equal day, equal. Equal darkness, equal light. Equal light, equal dark. Equal light, equal night. You see what I'm saying? That's what that's what he's saying. That's what the Lord's saying. But what the what the um, uh, Gregorian calendar? He had an astronomer redefine what the equinox is. He defined it as the moment. The moment. And God says it's a day, but he defines it as a moment, which is, uh, it takes the sun, the ball of the sun, seven minutes to go down from the bottom to the top to go past the horizon. Seven minutes. Now, the definition of the, of the e vernal equinox, and this only happens at the equator, okay, the equal day and equal night at the equator, okay, um, between sunrise and sunset. Okay, so that time from sunrise to sunset is equal to the night, they say. Now I'm going to read you something that says that's not accurate, but that's what the definition is. So, the um, Vernal equinox was redefined by Clavius, a Jesuit astronomer, that Pope Gregory the Thirteenth hired to fix. That's nailed down, okay. Uh, when the equinox is, okay. Why? Because they wanted to say that Easter Sunday, okay, is. Um, Two weeks, it's the full moon after the vernal equinox. Okay? It's the full moon after the equinox. So they tried to get both the moon and... Why? Because Passover, according to the lunar calendar, is kept on the full moon. Okay? The night of the full moon. But that's not accurate either. Because God didn't use the moon. Okay, he may have told uh, or allowed the Israelites to do it because he wanted to take away their Sabbaths, and that's why he did it. He allowed them to do it. But the Sabbath that the Jews are keeping today is on the seventh day of the Gregorian calendar, not the creation calendar, and I just proved it. It's still not accurate. Because the vernal equinox is not on Wednesday of the Gregorian calendar every year. And I showed you how few years it is in comparison to... It's more not than it is. Do you understand that? It's more not than it is. Okay, so God's year is 364 days. The Sabbath of the creation cycle has never been changed because it's every seven days. Every seven days. It's never been changed, okay, in God's creation calendar. But it's been changed in the Gregorian calendar. And they're about to change it again. They're going to make Sunday the seventh day of the week, not the first day of the week, in the one world calendar. That's coming. Why? Because God's going to force the devil to put his day back where it was. The seventh day on the seventh day of the week. 
Okay? And he's going to look kind of stupid because his first day of the week, which is Sunday, he's going to call it the seventh day. And the week's going to start on Monday. Say Monday will be the first day of the week. Sunday will be the last day of the week. They already have calendars like that in Europe. Go look at them. So, this calendar here is inaccurate as well, but it's closest to what we should be doing. Here's when the month begins on the vernal equinox. See, Brother Hodiff drew this calendar using um, Gregorian calendar names and dates. He says it's March 20, right here, vernal equinox. It's the first day of the year. And it's the first day of the month. So when you look at this and you talk about the feast days, the feast days are going to be just as accurate. It'll be on the 14th day of the first month at even. That's when Passover is, according to his vernal equinox, not the Pope's. Okay? So, just to keep this study short, I'll do a part two, uh, and I'll explain the pattern of the, uh, the Lord's calendar. Um, so that you will not see these discrepancies. Now, this is also, uh, ver what also verifies this is the uh, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, the Jonah study. Now again, Brother Hodiff uses Gregorian names instead of the creation calendar's names but what he says about those is accurate. But you have to know how to discern it. And I'll go through that as well. So I'm going to end this right now. Uh, the study of the sacred year and its main feasts.